Welcome once again to Professor Oluwadeya's educational videos. In this episode, we shall be looking at dialogue boxes in SPSS. What are dialogue boxes? Dialogue boxes are the gray windows that pop up in SPSS to display messages and allow the user to make inputs and set parameters. Dialog boxes are used to instruct SPSS to complete a task or procedure. Understanding how to use dialog boxes is central to data manipulation and analysis in SPSS. Dialog boxes appear when you click a menu or sub-menu item with an ellipsis. They contain options you can select. After you specify the options, you then choose a command button to excuse the procedure. How do you bring up a dialog box? When you click on a menu item, there are two types of sub-menu that you see. The first ones are those that have three dots at their end. Those three dots are called ellipses. Clicking them will bring up a dialog box. The other types are those with arrows on their hand. Clicking those ones will bring up a cell menu. And those sub menu also have ellipses at their hand. So whenever you click any menu item or sub menu item with an ellipsis at their hand, you will always be presented with a dialog box. Let's look at the properties of a typical dialog box we shall be looking at the frequency dialog box. All dialog boxes have title bars which bear the name of the selected menu or sub-menu function. For example, the title of this dialog box is frequencies and that is the sub-menu item that we selected. Let's look at another one. Let's go to analyze, compare means and Let's choose the one sample t-test. And there you can see that the title of this dialog box is the one sample t-test. Therefore, the easiest way to know what a dialog box does is to look at the title bar. Now, most dialog boxes are constructed along similar lines. Let's go back to the frequencies dialog box which we will use to illustrate the properties of a typical dialog box. Like we said, they always have the name in the title bar. All dialog boxes have a box to their left, which contains a list of variables from which you can make selections. If there are more variables than can fit in the box, scroll bars are provided so you can scroll through the list. Sometimes, some variables may be absent from a dialog box because such variables are not appropriate for procedures that are carried out with the particular dialog box. For example, categorical variables will not be listed in dialog boxes for procedures such as means or correlations, which require continuous data. When you click a variable in the box, it will be highlighted indicating that it is selected. The arrow immediately to the right of the variable list box will become bold. You click this arrow to move the variable that you have selected into the second box. This box has a caption which may be different in other variable boxes, but in the frequencies variable box, it is captioned variables. And usually, this is the action, the action box of dialog boxes. If you have made a mistake in your variable selection, all you need to do is to highlight the variable as shown, and you will notice that the arrow has changed direction, and clicking on the arrow will move the variable back. This box is very important. For example, SPSS will only do frequency analysis for gender that you have moved into this variable box. If you want to do others, you have to move them into the same variable box in order for you 
to carry out those analysis on the specific variables that we have moved into the box. Immediately below the list of variables is a section which contains check boxes. In the frequency dialog box, there's only one check box. All check boxes has a label detailing its function. When check boxes are selected, SPSS will carry out the assigned action. In this dialog box, this check box is labeled display frequency tables. Click the check box with the left mouse button and a tick mark will appear in the check box to show that it has been selected. To deselect it, click the check box again. When you have more than one check boxes in a dialog box, you can select as many of them as you need because they are not mutually exclusive. On the right side of most dialog boxes, you will find a set of buttons that brings up other dialog boxes for supplementary analysis under the main procedure. For example, click the statistic button to bring up the frequencies statistics dialog box as shown. Secondary dialog boxes contains options by which you can make selections for other statistics. For example, in this dialog box, you can make selections for quant quantize, mean, medium, mold, sum, and so on and so forth. You go back to the main dialog box by clicking the continue button at the bottom of the secondary dialog box. On the other hand, you can click the cancel button if you don't want to carry out the procedure that you have selected. In the main dialog box, you will also notice that at the bottom of the dialog box are a series of buttons. You click OK to execute the procedure and bring up an output viewer window. Click this button only when you are satisfied with all the choices you have made. Next to it is the paste button. This saves all your selections into a syntax window. Remember that syntax will save your commands in a programming language that you can reuse. The reset button returns everything in the dialog box to its default state. Let's click it to illustrate what we are talking about. All the selected variables have been returned to the variable list box and all selections in the main and supplementary dialog box will become deselected. You will notice that as soon as the reset button is pressed, OK and paste are no longer active. They are grayed out. The reason is if there is nothing in the variable box, then the OK and Paste button will have nothing to work on. Let's move gender back into the variables box. The Cancel button closes the dialog box without executing the procedure. This can also be done by clicking the X button on the upper right hand corner. The Help button brings up a window with instructions and explanations relating to the procedures in the dialog box. End this lecture by looking at another dialog box and using it to complete an analysis. So I'm going to close the frequency dialog box. Then I'm going to go into analysis. I will go to compared means and uh, one sample t-test and I'm going to pick H and put it there. And then I'm going to click options to show another example of secondary dialog box. In this instance, for example, it says confidence interval percentage. We'll leave it at the default 95% and click on continue. And then we click on OK. Clicking OK brings up the output window with the result of the analysis that we just carried out. We have come to the end 
of this lecture in which we have looked at the function of a typical dialog box. Remember that dialog boxes are essential to SPSS because you use dialog boxes to carry out your procedures in SPSS. Thank you. I am Oluwadi Akendi, a professor of surgery at the Ekiti State University at Ekiti. I have been teaching SPSS in healthcare research since 2004, both in Nigeria and in South Africa. I'm also the hopeful of getting to know SPSS, the best-selling book on SPSS in Nigeria. Apart from SPSS, the book also has a supplementary chapter on how to conduct online literature search, as well as one chapter each on Zotero and EndNote reference managers. Finally, I'm also the CEO of POSC Educational Consult, which specializes in organizing training, statistical software, and health education. Please visit my website for copies of my lectures and other information. Just scan the QR code with your phone camera. Check it out for more information on my book. The website also contains many downloadable PDF copies of my lectures in anatomy and orthopedics. Finally, you'll come across assorted information on medical practice in Nigeria on the website. For more videos on SPSS statistics anatomy, orthopedics and traumatology, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by scanning the QR code with your phone camera. Thank you for your time and attention. As they say in my language, Eshimu.